Hey love bugs, welcome back to another Tarot Lover Reviews. Today we are taking a look at the Neo Tarot created by Jericho Mandiber. I apologize if I've mispronounced their last name. I apologize. <laughs> but if you've heard of this tarot deck or you haven't heard of it, hopefully this review and the flip through that comes afterwards helps you to decide on whether or not this tarot deck is right for you. Now, if you wanna skip straight to the flip through, feel free to look down in my description. I break down all the suits into chapters to make it easier for you to locate exactly where in the flip through you would like to start. But right now we are gonna talk about the packaging, we're gonna talk about the guidebook, and we're gonna talk about the cards. Cardstock, the backing, the texture, naming convention, imagery, all the things. So if you're interested in the details, stick around. Otherwise, feel free to move on over to the flip through. So let's go ahead and get into the packaging. The packaging and the guidebook are kind of one, they're a package deal, <laughs> pun intended. Um, and I'll explain in a moment. But this is what the packaging looks like and looks fantastic, I might add on uh, a bookshelf just because it just looks like a very large book from the outside now the interior this is why i say that the guidebook is a package deal with the package it's because the guidebook is actually attached oh i have a letter in there i forgot i had it in there <laughs> um is actually attached to the packaging so I thought that was very interesting. I don't think I've ever seen any other tarot decks do this, but um, yeah. So the guidebook is attached to the packaging and you'll see here, this is where the cards are held. So it's a separate little section here and I'll bring that up so you guys can see that interior. And the packaging that holds the tarot deck is your standard slip box, tuck box, however you call it, um, where you keep your tarot decks. So it's kind of like a, you get the packaging that you would typically get with your average um, simple tarot decks, but then it comes in an additional packaging where it just kind of slips right in there and close it up and put it back on your shelf or wherever you um, tend to keep your tarot decks. So I found that interesting. And the, the box itself is very thick. So you know if it falls to the floor, definitely the tarot deck is well protected because it's within this, um, I can't even call it an insert because it's not even in anything really, right? But, um, it's the the sides the sides are very thick so you know that it's going to be well protected on top of the fact that it's centered inside the packaging so i love that with the packaging i appreciate it uh, just because i want to make sure my tarot cards stay good stay protected and um last as long as i can get them to last right okay so let's talk about the guidebook so this is it's a very thick guidebook i will definitely say that the cards are all in color okay all in color as you saw there you do get a um a section for tarot spreads so let me just kind of, it's very hard to hold this and the packaging all at the same time. It gets to be a little like all over the place, discombobulated, uh, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, so you do get several tarot spreads within the guidebook, which is fantastic. Um, so you know what? No, I am going to hold off on explaining um what this tarot deck is about before I kind of get into it. But as you could see, all of the cards are in full color, right? All the cards are in full color. Um, you do get the meaning, a reversed, and a self-care section for each of the cards. You also get an element section, themes, 
and affirmation section. So that's what you receive with all of the cards. Um, ba, ba, ba. Yeah. So let's talk about just this right now before we get into the cards. I don't care so much for the guidebook being attached to the actual packaging. Um, it makes it very hard to utilize because this part tends to get in the way. As you can see, I like just trying to show you, it's a lot. Um, I believe from what I've seen, most people tend to just take the book out, rip the book out of the packaging so that they can utilize it. And um, I would kind of have to do that as well because if 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 I want to be able to use the guidebook when I take the tarot deck with me wherever I go, because I like to shuffle through my tarot decks and take a tarot deck with me, a different one with me every single day, wherever I go, whether that's to work, to um, family functions, to the store. I like to take a tarot deck with me. And if I want to also take the guidebook with me, I wouldn't necessarily be able to do that with this guidebook because it's attached to the packaging. And there is no way I'm going to throw this entire packaging into my purse to take with me to the store if I wanted to, right? Even though, I mean, yeah, if I'm just going to go to the store, you don't necessarily need the guidebook, but there's a I would want to because of the type of tarot deck that this is, which we're going to get into. So that is the guidebook. Now, oh, before I get into the cards, one more thing I do want to say about the guidebook. The pages are fantastic. They are quality pages. They don't feel flimsy. They're fantastic. And I do want to point that out because... It, it matters, you know, it may not matter to everyone, but I just feel like that is something that should be pointed out. So there's the guidebook. Now let's go ahead and talk about the cards. So this is the backing of the cards. Okay, gorgeous, solid blue with geometric shapes. And it is a matte finish. Okay, matte texture. There are, it's not glossy, which I greatly appreciate. Um, yeah, not glossy. The cardstock or the card size is a standard tarot card size. Um, I am maybe a little bit shorter. I have a Rider Waite Smith tarot card here that is your standard tarot card size. And oh, actually, actually, it is a tad bit bigger than your average tarot card. But still, in, in this case, you're not gonna really be able to tell the difference, um, which is surprising. Most of the tarot cards that um, I've reviewed, they are either a little bit shorter or a little bit wider. This is just like perfect, right? With just yeah, a little bit larger, but not too ridiculous. So that is the backing and the size of the cards. The cardstock um is a thicker cardstock i would say um not pretty close to a goldilocks zone cardstock now what i mean by that is how i consider um a specific cardstock goldilocks zone is when i try to shuffle it in a riffle style shuffle right a riffle shuffle or a poker style shuffle is what I tend to call it, but I heard like the technical term is a riffle shuffle. But um, it's when you do this, right, with your tarot deck. This is how I gauge whether or not the cardstock is a Goldilocks zone, because a Goldilocks zone type of cardstock, you have no problem in bending your cards in order to shuffle it this way, right? That would be a Goldilocks zone. You can get just enough bend in order for you to shuffle without struggling to bend it and, to, and not over bend it, right? It's just right there in the middle. You get a really good shuffle. You have no problems doing it. That is a Goldilocks shuffle with, or a Goldilocks cardstock. 
with this particular uh, tarot deck, I would say it's a, it's on the thicker side. You can kind of see that I was struggling to bend it, so it is a little bit thicker. Um, but I can still shuffle it that way. It just hurts my knuckles. But again, with wear and tear, your cards get more and more flexible. Um, your cards kind of bend and get used to being shuffled in that particular manner. So, I mean, if that's the way you shuffle, that's the way you shuffle. But it's not a requirement for those who are learning. It is not a requirement to shuffle it in that manner. You can shuffle it however way you want to shuffle it. Um, you can do you can do that riffle shuffle. You can do the under over shuffle. You know, kind of do this, this, this. It, it's totally up to you. You could throw it up into the air and put it back all together, and that would be a form of shuffling. Whatever works for you. I don't have a set way to shuffle my tarot decks. I change the way that I shuffle my tarot decks depending on the cardstock of that tarot deck or just how I'm feeling that day. If I feel like shuffling it in that riffle shuffle, I will do that. If I just want to do it however other way, then I will do it. There is no particular way that I shuffle my tarot decks. So yeah, that is the cardstock. Now let's go ahead and talk about the naming convention and the uh, imagery. So with this, I always like to compare what I talk about to the Rider Waite Smith uh, tarot deck. The reason why I do that is because a lot of the guidebooks out there that are separate from the one that comes with this deck really pulls inspiration from the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. So the naming convention will be referenced in the book. The imagery may be referenced in that book. So it doesn't do you any good to utilize that book that you bought separately with a tarot deck that does not use the same naming method or doesn't use the same type of imagery. It just doesn't help. So, and, and it may, it will work, but it's getting your brain used to the differences between the two, okay? So it's not impossible. It's just going to take some time getting to know that tarot deck, that naming convention, and putting the putting two and two together when it comes to that. So yeah, that is why I always do the comparison with the Rider Waite Smith. Now let's go and get ahead. Let's go ahead and get into the naming convention. That is what I'm trying to say. Now the naming convention with this one is exactly the same as the Rider Waite Smith. There is no difference in regards to the naming convention. Uh, everything in the major is the same. Everything in the minor. Uh, pentacles, cups, wands, and swords, those are all the same. The court cards, king, queen, knight, and pages are exactly the same. So there's no difference with that. Um, in regards to the imagery, the imagery is definitely different from the Rider Waite Smith imagery. There are similarities but it's different because of the theme of this particular tarot deck. There are a lot of geometric shapes within this tarot deck. So you get the idea of what it's about, but it does not follow your Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. Okay. Um, let me see if I can give you a an example. Yeah, here is the emperor in the Rider Waite Smith. And here's the emperor in this tarot deck. So you get similarities as far as he's sitting down, you see the ram. Um, but there's there's differences, right? So that's why I say you get the idea of what that card is, it's just different. And it's a very, um, it's very diverse. It's, what is the word for it? Um, 
I want to make sure that I use the correct wording. It's non-gender specific, if that makes sense. I think that's what I'm I'm trying to say. It's a it's a very it's very gender fluid. It's it's very diverse when it comes to the imagery. Um, this may not be everyone's cup of tea because of the um, the geometric shapes. You know, there's not a whole lot going on within each of the uh, in the cards. So if you work highly on cues within the symbolisms within each of the cards you may find it a little bit difficult with this one but i actually enjoy the simplicity of this particular tarot deck uh, this one was gifted to me uh, i wouldn't have actually purchased it for myself but hey there is always a reason for things right synchronicities there's um no no such thing as coincidences that's what i want to say so i am this was actually one of my first ever gifted tarot decks and i i yeah i utilize it i have never had any problem in reading this tarot deck at all to me it's beautiful i do like the simplicity although i tend to go with give me more you know what I mean? Give me all the, the, all the things, you know, overwhelm me with things to look at. That's how I typically am, although it's not always a good thing, but that's normally how I am. I enjoy when there's a lot of things to look at, but with this particular tarot deck, it doesn't bother me that it's very, very simple. This tarot deck, and that's kind of why I wanted to get into this part to explain what you see within the guidebook in this tarot deck. It is a self-care, healing, and empowering, empowerment tarot deck. So with each and every single card in this tarot deck, you get a self-care section. And it gives you prompts. It gives you ways to promote self-care for yourself. So if you're looking to do a card a day, most people will do a card of day, card of the day to kind of utilize and focus on. This particular tarot deck will give you a self-care option something that you can do for yourself to empower yourself to heal yourself um because it's it's always great to make sure that you're taking care of yourself both outside and in right so i love this tarot deck i love what it promotes i i i love it so yeah <laughs> I hope this has helped you in some way. If it has, leave a like and take a look at my channel. See if there are any other tarot decks that you might be interested in taking a look at. If you do not find a tarot deck that I have yet to review, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what that tarot deck is and I will check to see if I don't already have it. I am almost done in reviewing all of the tarot decks that I have, which is crazy. I feel like I have so much more, but yet, anyways. <laughs> but let me know, I may have the tarot deck or I may not, and you just gave me a reason to add it to my list. So yeah, without further ado guys, enjoy the flip through that's coming up next and I will talk to you guys next time, bye. Thank you.